I'm Kay Cote, your host of the Business Spotlight series. And today I have Miles Latham, Managing Director of Aphyxius Films. As my guest on the show, today we're going to be talking about his journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a sneak peek into what it's really like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations like this one. Welcome, Miles, and thank you for being here today. Please give us a brief overview of your background and tell us a little bit about your business. Uh, thanks very much, Kay. Thank you for for, for having me on. So um, first and foremost, I think it's it's fair to say that my story is atypical. Um, that I would not recommend uh, people starting businesses in the way that, that we did. Um, but it's interesting nonetheless, um, because basically this is a hobby um, that's got horribly out of hand. Um, so um, when uh, I was at, uh, at school um, over here in the UK, in the East Midlands, um, in Leicestershire, to be more precise, um, I fell in love with um, filmmaking. I, I fell in love with the, the craft of, of video production um, through my school and, and through a, a, a club, basically, that was offered, an activity that was offered. Um, and it woke something up in me. I, I, I think I'd always been a storyteller to a certain degree. If you'd have asked me when I was eight, I'd have told you I was going to be an author when I, when I grew up. Um, so I think that the idea of working with video woke something up in, in that regard. But it also woke up something quite fiercely entrepreneurial and, and having made um, a, a few videos through my uh, through school and just sort of for fun, really, um, both myself and my business partner both quite liked the idea of, of, of getting paid for it, um, even if it was just at, what at the time was was pocket money. Um, and so that's precisely what we did. Um, you know, we were we were ringing local companies and offering to make them videos for 50 pounds that they'd just been quoted 50,000 pounds to make. Um, and unsurprisingly, a few said yes. Um, and, and what we very quickly realized was that, A, this was enormously good fun. Um, and B, it was something that uh, you were only as good as the last thing you'd made. And so if we kept making something good, um, more people, more people's heads would turn. And, and actually, I think that's a very, very, very simple business principle which which remains true to this day um and so yeah we 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 never really intended to start a business we we started a business because we wanted to get paid uh bluntly um and and we were actually working for some surprisingly large companies that 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 unsurprisingly weren't willing to pay two 16 year olds um and so um we we, we went through obviously the formal process of, of founding what was then a partnership um and, and, and going through all of that um all of that admin process and and it was essentially this this sort of heady combination of two best friends who'd known each other since they were four um you know doing something together earning a tiny bit of pocket money but creating things and and that was extremely exciting um i then got offered a place at a university which i couldn't say no to and didn't want to say no to uh, and so went and, and followed my academic passion for three years um but we ran the business at the same time which was which was pretty naughty weren't really allowed to do that but we did um and um we 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 sort of worked on full restaurant theory we we told people we were far too busy uh when i was at college uh and then when i came back from college all of a sudden we had availability and we could we could do work um but basically it meant that i could navigate my way through my degree which i very much wanted to do and then in 2006 um when somehow i graduated um we sort of looked at each other and 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 we were we were having fun we weren't making loads of money but we were making a bit um and we were having a great time and we felt very independent and we we had a fearlessness to us and mm. in in simple terms we've never decided to start a business but we've all, all, equally never decided to stop um <laughs> and so now it's all got horribly out of hand and, and there's lots of people that want paying every month and 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 all sorts of things like that um but fundamentally this was a business built from a from a passion for the thing rather mm -hmm. than a desire to make money from the thing um and i think that embeds something a little bit into the culture um and yeah nearly 20 years later we're, we're, we're still here that is an incredible journey i love that you kind of like accidentally started this business and like starting at such a young age too so you were able to kind of just shape it and see what happens uh it's a very very cool story 
Um, so generally speaking, now now you're in business, now you're like rocking and rolling. Like generally speaking, what does your current ownership structure look like? Do you have a team? Do you have employees? What's it like? Give me a, a picture. Yeah, so we've we've, 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 like. we've been through a lot of things over time. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's always been based around myself and 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 Tim, my my business partner. Um, uh, uh, sort of running the show um but then the, the the structure of how that's worked around us has changed um the way that we stand now is that we are a team of 18 um including us uh we have a three-man board um which is composed of myself and tim and very interestingly just to add to the sort of parochial nature of this story um our first ever employee um started as my junior uh, my junior editor when we were what 21 i think something like that um he is now our creative director um executive creative director and he's also on the board so this is somebody else who, who knows this business inside out and backwards and, and and knows where we've almost literally where we've come from um and, mm -hmm. and and so what what matters to us um and so we're very fortunate now to have a, a an unbelievably talented team we operate in a slightly unusual way for our sector um so our sector is a very um so video content production basically just what we do um is is predominantly um operated on a freelance model so you will have um very small organizations um, which are uh, directors or, or, or executive producers, really, um, who are there to make client contact, who are there to find projects, et cetera, et cetera. And, but then to actually execute them, they will bring in a freelance crew who will work to, to, to deliver a project. We've always operated in this slightly unusual um, space in the market, which to some people makes us very appealing. Um, we've always called it the in-house plus model, which is that we have all the the really vital roles when you're when you're making video content so that's directors producers directors of photography post production staff those sorts of people they are under the roof here they they are they are in house and they're full time and they're salaried and so they are working for us all the time and yes that that makes it our responsibility to generate lots of work for them um <laughs> but they are we 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 there is mutual trust there that we will find that work uh, and that they will deliver that work in places, we do bring in additional freelance support if we need to get bigger for a certain project. But it's invariably in roles which, although everybody's vital in a team, are, are more junior roles or they're, they're, they're roles that we don't necessarily need all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And so what that allows us to do is keep a very, very balanced cost base. We have a very mm -hmm. consistent, um, understandable and calculable uh, cost base um, that often allows us to be extraordinarily competitive um, in mm -hmm. terms of our in terms of our uh, price offering to customers, um, but that's come at the cost of many 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 years of a high cost base. So mm -hmm. for you know nearly twenty years now, we've had a pretty sizable monthly wage bill going out. You know um, where smaller organizations might have been able to to ride slower times better if they if they've been more freelance based we we've we've never done that um and even during the insanity of 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 2020 and 2021 um we didn't let anybody go um we kept the team fully intact uh, and in fact we've only had one member of staff leave us in the last 7 years so um i i think that's testimony to a, a, a structure, a business structure, and a management structure based on trust, um, mm -hmm. and based on a sort of mutual uh, belief that everyone is going to do everything for each other, and they're going to run through brick walls for each other, um, as as a good team should. Yeah, that sounds incredible. That you built such a strong team. You know, it sounds like you're creating that 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 environment that's really helping them grow and express express creativity within the the umbrella of the company which is really cool um yeah, so i'd like to dive into kind of what yes um i'd like to dive into kind of what makes your business special like who primarily are you serving now in business and like if i was in your audience how would i would know if i was a good fit for your services so our market is essentially div divided very roughly in two 
So about 30% of our work, no, I'll start the other way around. About 70% of our work is with um, uh, brands and agencies um, mm. who are looking for high quality video content. Now, a lot of the time that comes down to um, broadcast advertising. Now, obviously, broadcast doesn't just mean on the television anymore. Um, that can mean digital broadcasting and, and so on. But uh, branded content, above the line content, TVCs, those sorts of things. So um, if, if people are looking to produce high level, what we would call tier one video content, um, then invariably we are going to be a good fit. We do we do have a remarkably diverse portfolio. Um, again, mm -hmm. that is something that I think marks us out um, as, a, as a film production agency. Um, there are few sectors where we haven't got three or four really impressive pieces of portfolio that we can't put in front of somebody, whether that be sport, leisure, home electricals, um, fashion, uh, whatever. Like that we've, we've invariably got something um, in the portfolio where we, we can demonstrate a real ability in that area. Um, and so that, that's, a, that's obviously a, a, a sizable chunk of our business. We also have this really interesting little niche, about 30% of our business, which operates in the education sector worldwide. Mm. Um, so we do a lot of work with schools, universities, colleges uh, all over the world um, from, I'm trying to think, furthest, uh, furthest west we've gone would probably be uh, Panama uh, and the furthest east would be Beijing. So we, we've we've done a huge amount of work globally uh, in in schools and colleges. Obviously, a lot of that's in the UK as well. Um, and we've carved out a real um, sort of space in the market as a premium provider. We're we're, we're mm -hmm. unapologetic on that front. Um, we're we're not there to be cheap. We're there mm -hmm. to be good. Uh, and we're actually we're in a position now where where we're actually quite selective with the work that we take on in 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 that, which is a, a, a real luxury. And I, I know that is a luxury and it's and it's one I'm very grateful for. Um, so by and large, I mean, I'm being a little flippant here, but if it's on a screen and it moves, we can probably make it and make it to an extremely high standard. Um, but we are far more interested in work where there is the scope for uh, creative expression through video. So mm -hmm. there's a there's an enormous amount of um, hardworking content that is produced on a daily basis, uh, which has its part to play. Don't get me wrong. Um, but we are far more interested in a customer who's looking to turn heads and make hearts beat faster with their content. Um, if they're looking for that, then we're an extremely good fit. Mm, I like how you put that turn heads and, you know, to to just like get them their hearts beating faster. That is a really great way to put the work that you do, which actually leads me perfectly into my next kind of series of questions, which is all about your marketing, um, getting yourself out there. And I'm always curious to how successful businesses are doing their marketing and what that looks like in your monthly budget. Uh, so what are you doing right now in marketing pursuits to get yourself out there in terms of um, like your monthly budget that goes into marketing? Okay. So Again, I have to slightly divide that uh, this answer in two because our, our, the two sides of our business uh, operate slightly differently. We're very fortunate with our education sector work that our reputation has got to the extent now that, that by and large people come to us. We don't do a great deal of outreach um, except in really specific instances. Um, we do believe, and I do believe in um, industry presence on a human level. So I do like to make sure that I'm present at, at three or four significant uh, in-person gatherings um, for that particular sector, uh, major conferences, major exhibitions, things like that. I think that's a very important part of it. Um, I think more often than not, when, when one is doing new business generation, it's 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 far too easy to think about it in terms of selling to an organization. You're not, you're selling to a person um, or to a series of people. And so that human connection is absolutely massive. But we have the um, the benefit, I suppose, of having a sort of self-advertising end product. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things for us is about putting the right portfolio in front of the right potential customers. And there's an awful lot of, of monkey see, monkey do goes on in the in the world of in the world of business. And it is remarkable how many people will see something that you've made and realize um 
almost subconsciously that that is something that they could do as well. And so a massive part of our um, marketing spend um, is about putting our work in the right places. Now, that might be everything from uh, award ceremonies um, to, to generate PR around the work or, uh, again, going to specific industry events to, to, to showcase the work. Um, or it might be digital outreach to, and again, the beauty of, of where we stand technologically these days, to be able to put a piece of video clip in front of somebody at the click of a button and say, give us 90 seconds of your time, watch this. If it made your heart beat faster, then 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 speak to us. Um, mm -hmm. And so for us, we're, we're, we're rarely marketing our business. We're more often than not, we're marketing our work. And that that I think is a, is a, better position to be in in quite a lot of ways um and, and i often say this in the education sector work that by and large is, is the sector that i look after is i say I, I don't want you to be i don't want you to buy Aphixius. i want you to be reassured that Aphixius is making it but i want you to buy the idea we come up with that's mm. that's the difference um because i think far too often in the world of business and i'm not just talking about education here I think far too often there is a, a tendency for organizations to, to sort of shove a contract under a client's nose and say, sign this and then we'll do some thinking. Our attitude has always been that it's the other, it should be the other way around and that we should mm. do the thinking in order to earn the contract. Um, and I, again, I think that's a bit of a gesture to the outside world that more than anything, we we back our ability to come up with interesting ways of telling your story. And mm we are we we are happy to show you that in order to make our point um uh -huh. and and more often than not that works so yeah i mean i'm just trying to think over the last last couple of months or so you know we've attended a uh, an industry expo in amsterdam um as much as we have um made use of of digital mail shotting um as much as we have put money into linkedin campaigns so it's it's obviously targeted it has to be but it's also crucially it's it's end product focused. It mm -hmm. is here is a piece of video content we have made rather than here's a description of the company that could make your video content. There's a difference between those two things. Yes, that is very profound in especially like looking at how you run business, because that really does show the client like what it gets that idea in their head already. Then it kind of creates that concept and they can see what could be for them um, so it really creates an experience you know as you're uh, looking back on your journey so far what has been something like a memorable roadblock or a hurdle that you were challenged with that you were forced to overcome oh my um well i mean the obvious ones is the two major recessions and the global pandemic um they, they were True. a bit of a they were a bit of a bump in the road, if I'm honest. Um, no, actually, what I would probably say would be um, late 2019, early 2020, um, when we had got too big. Mm. And when we realized as an organization that our culture was the thing that drove what we did and that you can't maintain that if you just keep throwing bodies at it. Mm -hmm. And we found ourselves in a situation where we'd grown to, I think, 24, 25 staff. Um, and obviously there's, there's thousands of businesses that, that, that have that and infinitely more. But within the creative arts industry, we, we, we that's pretty big. And, and, and we, we got up to that size. And because of our model, what that also meant is that we got to a point of sort of critical mass from a financial management perspective where the beast took a lot of feeding every month. You know, mm -hmm. if we if we were gonna if we were gonna pay all those wages and keep all those people gainfully employed and 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 continue to increase those and invest in the company and so on and so forth, we were having to generate an enormous amount of work. And what we'd actually found was that we'd sort of slept walked slept walked into a position whereby sales mattered more than anything else. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. get the sale. It was it was put a number in a spreadsheet, hell or high water. And to a certain extent, it, it mattered not what that was for, i.e. whether it was the type of work we wanted to be doing. It obviously put huge pressure on our internal teams to, to generate that work and perhaps mm. didn't allow the time for quality. Um, and there wasn't perhaps that closeness 
and that sense of everybody having known where the thing has come from um, going on. And we had to make the unbelievably difficult decision. It's still the worst week of my life from a business perspective ever to rationalize the team down by five people. Um, and it was awful. Um, mm. Was it the right decision? Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, was it a nice process from a from a human perspective? No, it was awful. I, I was looking genuine friends in the eye and saying, "I'm afraid your position's, you know, going to be made redundant." And and that is that is no, no position to be in. And I think sometimes that that is the ultimate sort of the ultimate torment, isn't it, of business? In that it's a it's a profoundly human experience, but numbers don't particularly care about feelings. Um, mm -hmm. And that gets to a point where if you're going to make the numbers work, you have to be dispassionate. But often in order to make the numbers work, it's the passion that does it. So there's a sort of twisted irony to the whole thing. Um, and, and, and yeah, that, that I, I think because we, we myself and, and, and Tim have learned this job on the job, right? Neither of us have business degrees or MBAs or anything like that. We, we've, we've built a business from a, a, a back bedroom of a, of a house in, in the UK to what we are today based on trial and error. Mm -hmm. We based on getting it wrong, learning from it and not making that mistake again. Um, and in places being very brave in places being a bit foolhardy in places being very lucky. Um, and so when you don't have that, I think there can sometimes be an assumption that more big equals more good. I.e., mm -hmm. we're getting bigger. Therefore we're getting better. Well, not necessarily. Um, and I think that was something that that was a, a shock. Um, and you know, we looked like absolute geniuses because we lowered our cost base three months before three months before the world shut down, right? But it was actually total coincidence in terms of timing. Um, but it was the right thing for our business, and it and it it took the shackles of constant production and constant financial generation off us. Not that we don't have a pretty big cost base today, we do. Um, but it allowed us the space to make better work. And in our mm. industry, if you make better work, you win better work. It's as simple as that. And if you get yourself stuck in this sort of circular logic of, you know, we need to make more things to pay the bills, but the things aren't good enough to, to attract more people, you're only ever going to stand still or go backwards. And so that, 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 that was, that was massive, I think for us as a, as a business, it was almost like a, a, a point of maturity, if you like, that we reached where what we thought was success actually could have, could have knocked us over. And, and, and thankfully through a combination of instinct and some very, very good advice, um, we, we were able to get through it. Mm, and and that's a powerful story because that is something I've, you know, seen other businesses go through. And sometimes it's like growing too fast or growing too big can be more detrimental than good. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you for the sharing that story. Um, you know, kind of like looking at the future now, what do you see for your business in the next three to five years? Uh, good question. Um, well, the waters are very choppy over here in the UK at the moment. Um, the political situation is 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 unbelievably uncertain. Um, well, it's both sort of certain and uncertain at the same time. There's obviously going to be a, a general election um, in this country this year, uh, possibly early next, but more likely this year. Um, very, very likely that we're going to have a change of government. Now, what that means for businesses is, is remarkably up in the air, um, and we don't really know. Um, but what we do know is that we are a very diverse organization. Um, we have key accounts, much like lots of successful businesses do, but we are not single client or one or two client reliable, um, in, in reliant, sorry, in order to, in order to continue our operations. So we're in a very good place, I think, to, to navigate those waters. Um, but being a bit more optimistic than that, what we're also now seeing is that the, the model that we set out to create this sort of in-house team-based model of production um, allows us to attract very interesting work and uh, generate very, very good gross profit margins if the projects are handled well. And there, there is a sort of exponential 
potential for growth on on in terms of financial growth, uh, particularly on on that side of things. Uh, it's an interesting question of whether we want to or not, because, um, and I, I I may be swimming against the tide here, but the my 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 question to myself is less what do I want for my business in the next three to five years. And more, what do I want for my lifestyle in the next three to five years, of which my business is part? Um, and, you know, the sort of shared trauma of, of pandemic responses and so on refocused a lot of people, I think, in terms of the fact that, you know, you're you're 100% replaceable at work and 100% and irreplaceable at home. Um, and so one of the things that that I'd really like to get into this business over the next three to five years is that everybody is enjoying it as much as is humanly possible um, in connection with the rest of their life. And because work is, you know, work in particularly in a business like this is, is not a transactional thing. You know, people don't clock in at five clock in at nine and clock off at five, you know, people are, are invested in this unbelievably. And so, if we can, can, yeah, of course, I want to win bigger contracts. I want to make a Nike advert. Like, you know, there's things, of course, we want we want to do. Um, but if we can continue to develop a culture here where people don't see it as quote going to work, and they see it more as a as a, a genuine part of their existence as human beings, without getting too deep and philosophical here, that that would be really that would be really important for me. I, I'm equally very conscious, and we've talked about this innumerable times at board level that i think you've also got to be aware of when there could be change on the horizon within a business mm -hmm. and i've been saying for a while now and we've been saying at board level for a while now that we need to have our eyes and ears open because we're we're a, we're a successful little business we're, we're, we're doing pretty well um and that's going to bring opportunities and threats at the same mm -hmm. time yeah mm -hmm. And I've talked for a long time now about there's going to be a catalyst somewhere along the line and we've got to be clever enough to spot it. Now, mm -hmm. whether that's an investor, whether it's a, a, a particularly phenomenal client or project, um, whether it's a particular individual that we meet, that we work tirelessly to bring into the business, whatever it may be, um, I think you've always got to be on the lookout for the next piece of rocket fuel. And 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 I I feel like we're in that sort of area at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our financial performance has been extremely consistent and very very good for three years now, um, post pandemic response, and um, we could continue that, and that'd be great. But we also don't want to miss the chance to make that go big, without blowing our culture up like we nearly did six years ago um so it's a it's a bit of a balancing act if i'm honest you you you, you certainly don't get to the stage where you've done it and that's it you know mm -hmm. uh, and you sit there uh, and, and things just happen because we're not that kind of company um but yeah I, I think it's going to be i think it's going to be a combination of doing lots of little things right and then two or three really big things right oh yes that is like very profound and true. And, um, you know, this has been an incredible conversation to hear your journey through your business ownership, hear how your business has shifted and hear kind of what you're looking at next. Uh, we've covered some amazing ground. Uh, so kind of as we begin to wrap up, I would love to dive into a few rapid fire questions. These are first top of mind answers that come to your head. And we've got four questions. Are you ready for some rapid fire? Yeah, go for it. All right. Our first question is, what is the key to success for you? Work ethic. Work ethic. And what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Um, fearlessness is probably the most valuable thing you'll ever have um so while you've got it use it it's very mm. easy to be tentative it's hard to be fearless mm. so true uh what is one book or piece of content it could be a podcast anything that you have read most recently oh god um 
<laughs> uh, does it does it have to pertain to business? I suppose that's the question. It can um, be anything. <laughs> so um, my this isn't a quick answer, but I'll make it as quick as I can. Um, my academic background is um, actually in uh, religion and philosophy. Um, and uh, although I'm not a man of faith, I have, in, I have enormous respect for it. Uh, and I reasonably recently read a book called Dominion by Tom Holland. Well, I listened to it in the car because that's how I read everything these days uh, through audiobooks. Um, and it showed me a... It, it proved to me again that if you've got an understanding of history, you realise that there's there's very rarely anything new going on in the world. And if you are willing to invest the time to learn how humans have interacted with each other and, and, and dealt with each other for years and years and years and years and years, you can spot patterns really quickly. And I think as well, you're also far better at seeing things from more than one point of view. And we live in a very polarized uh, time um, where, where people seem hell bent on throwing themselves to one extreme or another um, in terms of um, uh, in, in terms of their belief systems or, or, or whatever it may be. Um, and reading things like that book, like Dominion, uh, was a very, very good way of regrounding myself in critical thinking and not getting caught up in the latest fad or hashtag or social movement or whatever it may be. It was more a question of, okay, I understand what this is. I've seen this before. I've read about this before. Um, let's look at it in a balanced way because you can very, history shows us that that bad ideas get traction very quickly and, and mm -hmm. that you can very quickly get swept up in something. I think something, I think we all need to get regrounded a bit every now and then as a businessman my way of doing that is through looking to the past. Mm, that's, yeah, that's really, really insightful. And um, final question is, if you had to choose any one area of your business you could rapidly improve tomorrow, what would it be? <laughs> um, I think like every other business owner in the country, in the world, um, I would say sales pipeline because wouldn't everybody? Um, uh, Honest. But yeah, I mean, I, I am I'm incredibly proud of, of of the work that the guys and girls here do. Um, it is it is I don't deserve it in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I don't think any business owner would ever not want one more inquiry. <laughs> Very true. Well, Miles, this has been an incredible conversation. And before we get to the final question of the day, how can others learn about your company? Feel free to share websites, social media, anything on how they can contact you. Well, we, we have the benefit of having a, a very strange and made up name, um, which means nothing before anybody asks the question. Um, uh, but by and large, if you Google Aphixius, you'll find us, uh, which is a nice position to be in. And you can spell it wrong in lots and lots of different ways and, and you'll still find us. Um, I'm also quite vocal on LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a great platform um, and I think it's a great platform to to. Um, share opinions and and experiences. Um, I think it's a dreadful platform to sell on. Uh, I think it's a fantastic uh, platform to uh, gently and intelligently market on. Mm. Well, thank you so much again. Um, so Miles, last question for you. What is the most inspiring to you today? What is what? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. What is most inspiring to you today? Um setting an example to my son i would say i mm. think that um i think it's it's because we are all so unbelievably content saturated these days and because so much of online life and social media paints such an unbelievably unrealistic um image of of what 99.99% of people's lives look like um, I think if you have proximity to a young person and you can set them an example um, for them to hopefully follow, that is a, uh, that's a privilege. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Miles, for being on the show today. It's been an honor to just chat with you, learn about your business. Uh, and I hope this brings you a lot of joy too. So thanks again. Uh, thank you.